All right, uh, welcome back to another video. As you see in the title, basically that I made art stable. And I mean that by a tool that I created called DCLI tool. Basically, it's a tool that allows you to really know and understand what is on your system by having declarative uh, package management, knowing what all packages are on your system and, and what could be causing issues. And then it has a also a rollback system, either using Snapper or um, TimeShift, whatever one you prefer on your system. Did update that to have Snapper support as well. And it can basically make your configuration more stable by having uh, the, the ability to roll back and add different modules and things into your system without having the fear of you know breaking anything. So yeah, so uh, basically we have the DCLI tool here. You can check it out on my GitHub. And here are a lot of the different features that we have in place, but I have gone over these in a previous video. So I just wanna share like what the newer things um, that I have added into the system are. And one of those being the uh, package merge option. So basically this will import existing installed packages into your uh, uh, configuration. So previously you would have all of your packages for a specific host in one um, area. And then you would have the option to add them into these different modules, um, as you can see here. So like if I wanted to install a different window manager like uh, Mango WC, I have all the packages that are needed for that window manager here. And any, uh, you can add conflicts if you don't want it to be able to install if you have something else installed. Uh, and then I have a, a hook that will actually install the dot files, which I have stored in my folders up here um, for that specific package. That way when I have a new system or if I just want to uninstall or, or reinstall um, my dot files onto my own system, I have them readily available in these you know modules here. So basically that has the ability to add the your existing packages um, into your actual system. So now um, when you do a, a DCLI merge option, um, this will take all of the packages that are on your system and then actually add them into your system. So it says all packages are already managed by DCLI. Um, so I've already done this before. So as you can see, if I go into my Don desktop, which is the system that I'm on now, all of the packages are already in here. So it took everyone that was not already in a module that's enabled and added it into the system here. So if I wanted to remove something, I could just remove it and then do a DCLI sync uh, prune, and then it would, you know, get rid of those packages that I don't need on my system anymore. So it's just a, a good way of um, managing and knowing, you know, exactly what you have on your system. And then um, I did add the ability that it backs up before it actually updates. So anytime you do an update, so I have my updates, um, you know, up here, these are all the updates that are, you know, on my system right now. And then if I do an update all, um, I actually have the D the DMS uh, bar, I made the command of DCLI update. So that way it runs my um, DCLI tool um, to do my updates. And so basically, before I put my password in, it says, uh, you know, creating snapper snapshot on um, this may take a moment, please wait. And then so it's actually pretty quick with snapper, it took a little bit longer with uh, time shift, but um, so yeah, and then it'll automatically start um, updating my system. Basically, you see here, you, it says no constraints found as well. So if you do want to have version pinning, um, you can do that as well. So if you want to have a specific package pinned to a specific version, you can do that within your system here, or you can do that, you know, with the, the syntax of just adding it into your actual uh, configuration. And then you also can do a lock file where you just lock all of your packages to a specific version. And so every time you do an update, it's not going to update any of those packages. So you, you, you know exactly where your system's at. If you want to treat, you know, Arch more like a Debian based release, um, then you can, you know, lock them all and then remove the lock if you want to um, update your system. So that's just the option there, but it does just use, you know, Pac-Man and just goes through and, you know, updates all of your, your system there. I know I'm good because it made this, you know, backup right before it did the actual um, update. And so all these packages will just update and uh, I won't have a fear <laughs> that something breaks or I have an issue or, you know, something uh, becomes unstable because of that update. So that's just a, a nice feature that you have there um, to, to feel like you have a, to know that you have a more stable environment on your system. I think that's a, just like a nice to have there. And I did add also the ability to create folders within your packages before you had to have like all of these YAML files as your modules here. So I made it so you can create folders only down, you know, one tier of folders for right now is uh, supported. So you can create, you know, as many folders as you want, but you can't 
create folders within folders. <laughs> um, I haven't gone that in depth, but uh, you can create folders within your module folder here. Um, so I have like CLI tool, you know, AUR. So I created a script to be able to just install KAUR AUR um, onto my system. So I add that as a module so I can just enable that whenever I want to on my system or disable it if I want to as well. By enabling it, um, it just installs it without having to go to the website and copy all that stuff. Each time I you know reinstall my system or install it onto a new system, um, I could just have that done. And then I have my web app tool. Basically, I stole this from Omarchi. <laughs> Basically, the, the tool is it's a script to um, create web apps within your terminal um, just by doing uh, web app install and then it uses the same thing where you can just create the name of the app and then you know paste the url that you want and then whatever the image you want and then hit submit and then it creates that you know web ur web url for you so yeah so i i basically made it so um i can install that onto my system you know much easier without having to you know add that separately um just in case i don't need it on certain systems like i didn't really need it on my laptop but i use you know a lot of the web apps on my um, desktop here so I added it there, and obviously you see all the window managers and stuff as well that I have uh, available, um, some dev stuff for development, lazy vim installations and stuff like that. So I'm kind of using it as like a, a installation tool to have a script to install stuff. Um, also, it, it adds the packages that you need, the dependencies for that specific thing. So I have all those dependencies that I need for lazy vim to, to run. Same with like installing a new window manager. I have all of the packages that I need for my specific configuration and then i have an install script for each one of these as well you know same for for neary there too and then i do have an asus like tablet that i have um so i have this available to be able to install all the asus you know packages onto that uh, system you could also add it into your like host configuration so for the asus tablet here i could add those packages into the host itself if i wanted to but i just added it down here just in case i do get another asus you know laptop or computer or whatever i just have it ready to be able to do so then I have all my main apps that I, I want you know pretty much on every system um, to be able to install there and then all your all of the scripts you know live in here um, so there is a base configuration that automatically installs on your system just doesn't have all the modules that I have um, or you can actually install the modules that I have if you want to by doing dcli in it and then dash bd will actually install my configuration onto your system so that way you can install all the modules and stuff that I have that I have you know saved them into my GitLab. Yeah, you can, you can do that if you want to, or just have a fresh install as well. Something else I did add is uh, flat pack support. I don't believe I had this in the previous video. You can actually have uh, flat packs in your actual configuration now. So you just add the actual, make sure you have your flat pack installed, um, and then you do have the remote added to your uh, your system there. So if it does fail, you make sure you run this command there. And then you can define if you want user or system within your um, actual configuration. And then you can come up here and then you can see that you can just add packages with the actual flat, flat pack, flat pack package name, and then it'll, it'll install those as flat packs. Um, or you can define them as flat packs in more explicit format there if you want to, but you can add flat packs. And then the other thing that I did add was the ability to add additional computers um, a little bit easier as well. So basically when you come into here, you can actually have repository management. First computer, you just do DCLI repo in it. So this way you don't really have to know much about repos and how to push and update and all that stuff. These scripts kind of just do it for you, but you will have to create a GitHub or GitLab lab repository and add the URL link in here. And then it will add all the information from your Arch config on your system into that repo um, automatically. And then also on additional computer, if you did do that, you can do a DCLI uh, repo clone and then uh, clone your repo on here. You can obviously do all these manually if you want to. You don't have to do it through the system if you want to, but you also can sync your changes with DCLI repo push and pull. And then you can also see status of what your repo is uh, looking like at that very moment. So that way you can have you know multiple machines uh, workflow as far as like having them on your machine similar to like a NixOS uh, host um, that you would have on a on a NixOS configuration as well. So um, that's a pretty cool you know feature. And so yeah, yeah, let me know in the comments like anything that you want to see added in here um, or you can add like an issue in Git, GitLab or join my Discord and, and let me know there. But definitely try it out. Let me know if there's any bugs or anything happening that shouldn't be. You know, it is uh, very much in like beta status. So 
I am, you know, working on getting everything, you know, ironed out and adding new features as I go. And basically, like, I just, as I use my system and I want something <laughs> to be either automated or added, I just add that as a feature within the DCLI tool. Yeah, just let me know in the comments anything that you might want to see, you know, added on here. And I did add um, the ability for like AUR support to have either EA or Peru originally, which is Peru. So someone was a uh, asking for EA. And so that's uh, available now too as well. But yeah, I just like to, to share kind of the, just the status of where everything's at and kind of making your, your Arch configuration uh, more stable. This is a really cool and easy to use tool um, to do so. So yeah, so if you've and been enjoying my content, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.